I'm researching the British author Ford Maddox Ford and particularly focusing on his First World War journalism and propaganda. Ford's father was German and so I'm interested in the relationship he had with Germany throughout his life and particularly thinking about how he wrote about German culture. I think at the centre of it is about reconsidering Ford's relationship with Germany but that has a, a broader impact in thinking about how other writers uh, negotiated that tension between um, their personal lives and the international politics of the, of the day. Um, Ford was part of a, a much bigger British propaganda campaign that was organised by uh, the government and based at Wellington House. It was, came to be known as the Wellington House campaign. And it's, um, it's a particularly targeting American intellectuals and getting prominent British writers to communicate to American intellectuals about the culture of Germany and why it's so bad that we should be fighting against them. And some of these read like textbooks. It's sort of unbelievable to think that these would have as much impact as they were thought to have at the time. Well, I spent a few years being a journalist and in that time I really wanted to get my teeth stuck into something that was a bit of a longer term research project. So I was looking forward to diving in and, and looking in detail at something, completing my ideas and really working something through. And uh, I have an interest in international relations and obviously in journalism and in literature and history. So they all came together really to, to uh, contribute to my research project. This is Ford's second book of propaganda published in seven, September 1915, written in mid-1915. By this point he's decided against Germany and it's called Between St. Denis and St. George, A Sketch of Three Civilizations. It's obviously looking at the cultures of Germany, Britain and France, particularly at the relationship between Britain and France, and it's a celebration of French culture as opposed to um, denigrating German culture. And in it we find one of Ford's strongest um, statements against Germany. He says, I wish Germany did not exist, and I hope it will not exist much longer. And it's uh, quite forceful, it's a seeming rejection of the personal ties he has in Germany. Um, but it comes amidst something that's a little bit more qualified, as a um, quite a nuanced argument. He's writing in um, a time when there's a real debate about the who has the best culture between Britain and Germany, or between it's about civilization which is characterised by Anglo-French versus the culture of Germany. So I'm combining. Um, archival and contextual research with literary analysis. So a lot of my time is spent researching in libraries, um, but I've also done archival work, uh, looking at Ford's collection of materials of unpublished manuscripts, reading his letters, the postcards he sent to his children, and combining that to create a picture of what Ford's relationship with Germany was like, and then look at how that changed over time. I think there are some challenging points have been struggling with my German language. Um, I have to read, um, read German propaganda because Ford engages with German texts and so sometimes it's a struggle to understand. I mean German texts can be tricky at the best of times let alone um, when they're making some quite curious arguments. And so that's sometimes a challenge but um, for the most part it's it's more on the basic level of motivation and, and focus and not getting distracted, staying, staying focused on subject can sometimes be difficult. For me, there's an interest in thinking about the personal pain involved. Ford said right at the beginning of the war that um, wh whoever wins the war, I'll have a mangled, a mangled heart in either case. And I think that sense of a, a mangled heart is really at the, um, at the core of thinking about how people of different extraction dealt with, uh, dealt with the war. I mean, in the course of one week, I might be researching anything from uh, German educational policy in the 19th century to spa culture in the 18th century to looking at the concept of propaganda in a more uh, philosophical way. And it just opens up so many avenues for thought and research. And also it's about understanding one another better, even somebody who writes propaganda.